welcome to Little Learners. In today's video, I have a very special guest, Heather from Reading Rocks is joining us to talk all things reading. So Heather, welcome to the channel. Hi, thank you for having me on. Pleasure I am to be here. Great, I am so excited to have you on finally because I know that we've been planning this for a little while and I had to reschedule, so thank you for being so patient. Um, so, shall we just get into it and ask all about you and reading rocks yeah so um so at the moment you can see i am um, i'm in my children's bookshop in cornwall in st ives so i opened that uh, about a year ago um but prior to that i was a primary school teacher um in the northwest so i taught for 15 years right across the primary age range um and throughout my teaching career kind of got this passion and interest in reading, which is where Reading Rocks evolved from, which started as Saturday CPD conferences, people traveling from all over the shop to kind of get together, talk about books, enthuse, and learn about reading for pleasure, reading comprehension, reading of all forms in the classroom, uh, in school, building in that culture. Um, so yeah, I've got a nice little community of Reading Rockers um, right. together and yeah so it's just kept on going really so we have the shop and then um, we do a Reading Rocks uh, subscription recommending books to teachers every other month which is exciting and uh, try knowing about even if you're keen on children's literature and try to keep up to date you will miss some things and what I try to do is recommend books that will uh, support the curriculum as well as supporting that reading for pleasure culture. And something that's important is choosing books that look at life through, you know, the contemporary lens, making sure that the right uh, values and views are, are projected to our children and that the books reflect current society. They reflect realities and diversity. Brilliant, that's fantastic. That's something that we really value on the Little Learners channel is, you know, representing, making sure everyone has some representation and showing society as it is now. So that's really great. As teachers, we really want to promote reading for the love of reading, but also we do have to think about the curriculum as well. So it's great to have, you know, a kind of hand with that. Sometimes you can be doing the same, you have like the same planning that's been going on for 10 years and using the same books for 10 years and it can be really lovely to have someone to help to kind of freshen that up a little bit. Absolutely and sometimes you know things that I've learned having a bookshop and selling books to schools um, is that sometimes there's books that are great and teachers recommend them but they're out of print so a, a fellow teacher might say, I use this book and it's great, but you can't actually get hold of it anymore unless you go on eBay and pay £800. <laughs> yeah. So you know, yeah. knowing what is is still available that you can get, you know, class sets of, or that the children, if they're inspired, can say, you know, use that nagging poem and say, I want that copy at home, um, or know that author, that illustrator, and, you know, can go and see that in the bookshop or the library um, and know that they can get some. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. You want children to be able to take that love of learning home and maybe engage with the same books or the same authors, same illustrators at home as well. Um, so can I ask, why did you decide to do this for teachers? Initially, it was I'm a teacher. That's what I know. And I don't know about you, but quite often when I see new books, my brain pings and I'm either going, oh, look, at, look at the use of grammar in there. I could do that. Or I'm going, oh, that matches the science curriculum. Um, and yeah. so, so there's that. And, and knowing the audience and wanting to help the teachers be up to date and have that in their classroom. But what we found with the subscription is quite a lot of parents subscribe to it. Um, okay, so parents can subscribe as well. You can subscribe whether you're a parent or um, a teacher It's or a school, subscribe as schools as well. Um, it's totally up to you. We do have some um, subscribers who might be a five six year five six teacher and they get the box for their class and then they get the eyfs box for their own um children so they're double <laughs> double yeah. subscribers um and we yeah do, because as Sorry, a shop i do children's subscriptions um which are a bit more bespoke mm -hmm. um, so and tell me about your child's particular needs and um, so we do that through through the shop 
Oh, that's brilliant. Because like you said, teachers are busy people, parents are busy people. And I do get lots of um, messages asking uh, from parents asking about reading, what kind of books I would recommend when I have consultations with parents. That's one of the biggest questions that I get asked. And so I know that there are a lot of parents out there that would really appreciate a service like this. Um, we have on the Little Learners channel, the audience is mainly made up of a split of parents and teachers. So, um, you know, kind of see it from both sides. So it's great that you're able to support kind of everyone in that area. Shall we, shall we take a look at the box you sent? Yeah, let's um, do. So I have it here. So Heather very kindly sent me um, a month. I, it was obviously a little while ago because I had to reschedule. So I can't quite remember which month box it was. So this, yours is the May box. The May box, lovely. Okay. The boxes go out in July just before. Okay, so it's every other month. Yeah, if you're a teacher, it roughly works. It works out at one every half term. Brilliant. Um, okay. Yeah. Every, every other month. Okay, yeah. lovely. So I very much appreciated the fact that there was coffee and a biscuit in here <laughs> because all teachers need that. Um, okay, so we have three books in here. Never teach a stegosaurus to do sums. And then we have one, two, three, do the shark and a book on sharks. We also have this very nice mask, which I assume is to go along with our Stegosaurus book, which was really nice to kind of have that added bit in there. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about why these books in particular were chosen for this box? So um, the box has two key titles and then extra bits and bobs. So it just so happened that your extra bits and bobs uh, this time was a little uh, non-fiction. So this one, um, I think kids love dinosaurs, don't they? Dinosaurs is a very popular um, topic. Um, but this one it talks about if a dinosaur did the, did the maths, um, what could they eventually do? And I love the fact that it gives the children a sense of understanding of why do we do all these numbers and comparing and measuring? And it gives them a sense of potential um, and aspiration. Um, lovely that we've got uh, a character of colour on the front and um, and a girl with maths. I think, you know, it's important. Absolutely. We, um, we talk about that as well. So absolutely great. And I think I was anticipating that book coming out because this the, this was the first one where um, never show a to So this is all about what you can do when you um, when you become a reader. Um, Brilliant so much on the page I think with um, young readers sharing a book that's got loads on the page really helps them to understand how to navigate a text to to skim and scan and you know mm. and, find, and it, learn those early kind of uh, uses of a book so love that one lots of little bits and bobs to discover and loads of fun yeah, I have to say I was really excited when I opened and saw this because first of all, my son loves dinosaurs. Um, he obviously can't read yet, but he likes looking at the pictures. Um, for those who don't know, he is only one. Um, I loved the fact that we had a girl in maths, obviously a girl um, of colour. And it, I always think it's really nice to have something like a book on numbers because you get a story and you get the maths in there as well and I'm always talking on this channel about how um, all of our areas of learning interlink um, so I was very excited about this one yeah um, and then and then one two three do the shark so it was nice to choose two books that had a, a bit of a number uh, theme so again you can bring out the number um, within your storytelling as well absolutely beautifully illustrated um and i'm sure we've still got some children who enjoy a bit of baby shark so you know it always ticks that box <laughs> in your head now haven't i it's gonna be stuck it's gonna be stuck in there now yeah i apologize um, to all my subscribers <laughs> sorry um but but this one is great and interactive because sometimes um 
we can think or oh, children need to sit still and be calm and listen when they're reading not with this book it shows mm -hmm. if you've got a wriggler and act, it's kind of active they've got to listen but they can join in and do it's really active and do the actions dive down um and do um a bit of shark snapping I think it's a, a book that is going to be great in early year settings that children are going to be asking to be read again and again. Um, Absolutely. Anything that gets them moving that they can join in with, you know, it's so, so important. Um, I've made so many videos about reading on this channel. And um, one of the things I'm always talking about is comprehension and, um, you know, helping children with their understanding and doing things like joining in and looking at the pictures and, you know, that excitement around reading really, really helps them with their understanding. Um, and yeah, anything yeah. that where you can be a little bit silly is yeah, so fun. And can re exactly, really read it with emphasis and yep. enthusiasm. And I think a book that is structured like that um, really encourages that in the um, in the practitioner to do it. it yeah, it's, and, and that when you're expressing it, it really helps the children gain that level of understanding, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. And I think it's hard to read a book like this without some expression and silliness, you know, it really, it's a, it's, it's a fun one to read. Yeah. And when they ask for it over and over again, we get better and better. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. Nobody Always a good sign. To be a perfect performance first time, are they? You no, know? no, of course not. I think, you know, especially if you're um, just because, uh, early in the classroom, it's, a, you know, I would say take your book, particularly picture books, and go over it and practice it yourself so you think about where you're going to you know express or join in or pause with, with the children yeah definitely i think there's no shame in um practicing reading a story before you um, read it to children and i think the more kind of engaging and enthusiastic you are when you're reading the more they will want to join in which in turn makes you want to express yourself even more um so, you know, it's kind of that feedback from them and it just makes everyone feel happy while they're reading it. Yeah, and you're working on that, that culture of reading for pleasure. You know, when, when they're first starting out and they're doing their phonics, it feels like really hard work for them. And, you know, they're, they're exerting quite a lot of concentration and energy and they'll, they'll hit stumbling blocks and find it, it difficult. So we've got to really show them you know, this is the goal, this is what you're aiming for, and this is why, you know, you're putting that that energy in and showing them the joy of reading and, and, and linking it to those bubbly, lovely feelings. Oh, I'm having a great time and, you know, I'm having a great time and I'm reading. And the more we can make that connection with them and that they understand that they are a reader, you know, the, the more that they'll fly. Um, so, so this one uh, was an, an extra goodie. So th there isn't always three books, but this it was really nice to, to find uh, a little non-fiction that matched one of the, the texts in the book. Um, and it's got gorgeous photographs and very simple that can be used to support um, early writing as well with, with mm. the, the diagrams and the labels and, and some more maths in there, that kind of uh, measuring. And the children can very easily, you know, share it with each other, even if they can't read the text, they can be talking about this. this show. Absolutely. I think a lot of the time people think that very young children can't access nonfiction books because there's no story. But actually, I've had so many students who preferred nonfiction books, even if they couldn't read them yet, they'd like to share them with their friends, look at the pictures. Um, I actually had a student once who knew everything there was to know about sharks way more than i knew about sharks and he was so excited anytime there was a non-fiction book about them um and you know as they can start reading themselves it just opens up this whole other world of that same book that they've already enjoyed actually something that you were saying about earlier about the uh, promoting the the love of reading and enjoying reading and phonics can seem very um kind of regimented at times and often the books that children are given to start reading are very boring <laughs> so because they need very very simple language in them um, that they can decode and it can cause them to kind of lose that love of it they don't want to read those books because they're not exciting so having 
books that you can share that are exciting and they can maybe read a couple of words in every now and again is really, really important. Absolutely. And, and yes, we read nonfiction for purpose to find stuff out. But lots of people, like you said, adults and children find that pleasurable, that they find that that is, you know, what, what makes them get excited. And I think it suits different personalities. Some people like the story starting, you know, and it going and we find out what happens. Um, and some people like dipping in and out. I'm going here to find out about that. And I don't have to read the whole book. You know, it, it, we need to recognise that uh, reading, you know, literature, it's an art. And we all appreciate it in different ways, as much as you might like that painting and I don't. You might like that song when you're 18 and then when you're 38, you think, hmm, it's not so good. <laughs> <laughs> no, our tastes change and yeah. you know that that's something that we need to encourage in children do you like this one you know what do you like about that and it's okay for us to to have differences um, and behave differently with books yeah definitely i um, you, you hit the nail on the head there you know children like different types of books different types of reading just like adults like different types of things and um being exposed to a wide range of different types of reading and different types of books really helps children in other areas of their development. Dinosaurs is a brilliant one, you know, and you said about the, the people who, who knew so much about sharks, they, they absorb that language, don't they? Um, you know, when my daughter was three, I remember knowing me Pachyrhinosaurus from me Parasaurolophus, and she could say those words too. Um, and and yep. she'd learnt that from you know those experiences and looking in those books and watching different bits and bobs about it. But they can absorb that that brilliant vocabulary and then reuse it in their own writing, their own talk and play. To kind of um, help anyone watching this video, what do you think is important to consider when? you're looking for a book for your child or your class apart from using reading rocks to help you <laughs> yes that's a good way to do it um <laughs> i think um we talked about dinosaurs but that links nicely with thinking about your ch child's interests mm -hmm. picking something um or the interests in your classroom um is really really powerful something that they can engage with or recognize um things that are happening celebrations things that match you know um football's a good one at the moment or you know whether they're into the olympics or things like that um space dinosaurs sharks trying to find books that that flick the switch on um is a good way of, of helping to make sure that your child your children in your class are engaged with the books yeah in in early years following their interests is such a big part of the early years and kind of the, the framework that we follow um, and I think some, sometimes um, parents I suppose teachers as well can think oh no they're only reading books about this one thing or they're gravitating towards these I need to show them other ones and, and get them to read other types of books but actually if they are really enjoying that and that is fostering their love for reading then that's fantastic. Of course, we can, you know, show them other books and often in school we need to, but I think it's it's not a bad thing if they're gravitating towards one type of um, kind of theme for their reading as long as they're enjoying reading. And you could use either teacher, bookshop uh, or library knowledge to kind of say, well, yeah, you've enjoyed this book, which is about their said interest, but you know that that author's also written this one and you can use Bridgeways or the illustrator is the same or, oh, it's a bit similar to that one. Shall we have a look? Um, I think using um, peer uh, power is, is quite good there. You know, your friend en enjoyed this book or when I read this to my class last year, do you know that class? That, oh, they loved it. So I think you're really going to... Um, I think that that sense of, you know, reading can sometimes sound like it's a solitary thing. It's something that we do on, on our own, but actually it's quite a, a social thing. It's something that we can engage with and talk about and, and have a shared experience, particularly in, a, you know, a, a classroom setting when the children are, you know, sat down to, to listen. Um, yeah. 
absolutely. I was going to say that we're, whenever I would look into my reading corner, very rarely would I see a child looking at a book by themselves. They were often sharing it with friends. Um, and so knowing that reading doesn't have to be solitary, or it can if you want it to be, is really lovely because you can share your interests with each other. Um, and it's just another way to get children engaging in, in reading. So do you have anything in your shop at the moment that you think are a good example of books that you can get lots of different things out of? Lots, lots. Okay. But, <laughs> Do you have a was, few that you can I show us? <laughs> I picked just a few. Okay. <laughs> and by chance, I think you must have been sending me yellow vibes from the chair. And actually, yellow the books from the box were all yellow. There's quite a lot of money. <laughs> maybe bringing on the sunshine of the sun. Yes. Summer. Yes, um, we so need it here. I'm going to go for um, two yellow books first of all. This this is one of my absolute favourite books. I think over the lockdown, lots of people discovered uh, Rob Biddulph and Draw with Rob. Mm. Um, and this one is about a sausage dog, which just makes it a winner for me anyway. I mean, how cute are they? Um, but this sausage dog is very different to everybody else and thinks that she doesn't fit in. So she goes off to venture and find her like, but in that discovers that actually rocking to your own beat and being who you are um is is a good thing to be and it's good to be different um great apparently there's a christmas for, there's a christmas odd dog out coming out this Ooh. Christmas. <laughs> so, so books that help us talk about that personal and social uh, development and uh, giving up those opportunities um reinforcing you know children's value and and and, and self uh, we can do that and then this one I think has just got a brilliant title Barbara throws a wobbler <laughs> and I think we've all thrown a wobbler in our time oh, yeah. uh, so uh, there's the wobbler uh, she basically has a big paddy um, mm -hmm. and uh, at the back it's really cool because it's got some bad moods uh, different okay. types of different types of bad moods but it just talks about Barbara having a bit of a bad day and uh, how she comes out of it and you know that's kind of a normal thing so you know fantastic yeah I think a lot of the time sorry I think a lot of the time um when it comes to things like tantrums or I often call it just having a big emotion um a lot of people don't know what to do about it and having a book to support that and kind of talk about those emotions and those big feelings that are really hard to to um, understand for children is is such a big help. Absolutely, not in the moment when they're having the wobbler. No, they're just <laughs> yeah. uh, another time. Yes, yeah. Afterwards, and sometimes children can recognise the behaviour in a character more so than they can in themselves. Can't they? It's a really good um, talking point. This one um, is about a triangle again that, that kind of doesn't fit in a little bit uh, like odd dog out it's great because it's got shapes in it as well so you can hit lots of things and talk about the shape um, but the um, author and illustrator duo um, um, said that this book was created inspired by their own child in, um, in year three who was struggling to fit in and, and the children were playing games that he didn't want to play and they didn't want to play his. And it was a kind of about finding a way um, to recognise differences and, and kind of get along. So another one of those that, that opens up those opportunities. Um, books for joining in, for engaging children. Um, I feel like we've talked a lot about dinosaurs. <laughs> well, you know, they're very popular for this age group. <laughs> Uh, but this series by Penny Dale and it's Nosy Crow. So um, look out for Nosy Crow books. Quite a lot of them have this little QR code in the front, which means you can scan it. And then if you've done it on your, on your phone, on your device, it will read the text to you. Oh, with amazing. A when you need to turn the page over so brilliant for growing independence children can can have it and you know turn the page over and be in control um, of yeah. the text really really helpful for families whose uh, first language is in english as well to have that support yeah they're great for that mm. um so it has lovely end papers so you've got lots of the words that you can learn about but it has uh, sounds that are, are repeated. So 
purple dinosaur bumping, bumping through the forest, through the forest and along the tracks. And then it goes, rum, rum, rum. So the children can, can join in those sounds, but also get used to uh, um, linking the, the text to the sound and they can feel like they're reading because they know what you're going to say and they can point to it very, very early reading. Fantastic. So can develop confidence and build engagement. Another yellow one. We love some, we love some yellow. <laughs> this is not a unicorn, um, which is just gorgeous and it's got lots of neon, but it's, it's not a unicorn. And then it goes through it's not a unicorn and then the horn becomes all kinds of different things so it's a tunicorn a spoonicorn a blow up your balloonicorn um, Love that. and then at the end um it's a it's a you so unique to unicorn but i think books that uh, inspire children's imagination and allow them to make up their own parts um, so they can come up with what might be on the end of the, the unicorn. I think those those types of books uh, are brilliant. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with u mm -hmm. uh, The copies in my house are a bit battered. Uh, <laughs> that means that they are well loved. They are well loved. They've been yeah. read and read and read. But what I love about u is you, you, can, you can read it from cover to cover. Um, but if you haven't seen them, there is always just immense illustrations um we're off on an amazing trip choose a job on board so on each page you kind of have to say oh i'd like to do that job um or i'd like to be there i'd like to eat that thing um and it really gets children to engage with the text um and to make their own choices and opinions and form that which is you know good to to, to build that in in, in early text so much to discover on each page and each time you read it as well there'll be something else and you're in a different mood some of them are about what would you wear and what would you eat uh, and you can talk about well I, that, that might have been what i chose yesterday because i was in a celebratory mood but i'm tired i'm going to choose the pajamas <laughs> um, gives that sense it's brilliant for early talk yeah um, and then finally books we talked about non-fiction and this is a lovely series, the big book uh, of blooms, but books that children can dip in and out of and learn from and become experts and discover. Um, Beautiful, yeah. Uh, just having nonfiction around is, is, is really important. And, you know, a lot of nonfiction now is not that um, boring, straight laced stuff that you imagine from old library days. It's beautiful yeah. in its own right, it's really tactile and encourages children to engage with it. This isn't, oh, it's called a big book. It's not, some of the nonfiction now is absolutely massive. <laughs> yeah. And I think the the design to be, I call them belly books, the design to lie on the floor, <laughs> on yeah. your belly, and open right out, and two mm -hmm. of you can get side by side and kind of engage, yeah. perfect for a classroom setting or, or home, to really, you know, inspire children and take them off into their own little niche. And, yeah, definitely. Oh, taking them off into their own little worlds, different for every book. It's just, I love reading. I've always loved reading. And definitely when I started teaching, reading and phonics and helping children to read was like my absolute favourite thing to do. So anytime there is a new exciting book that I can share with children, I just absolutely love it. So I totally understand <laughs> why you do what you do. Um, you shared so much with us today, um, so many things that will help parents and teachers who watch this channel. Um, do you want to tell everyone where they can find Reading Rocks online? I will obviously put it all in the description box below, but would you like to just promote yourself? You can find me on uh, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, either as Reading Rocks or the bookshop is called Stories by the Sea. Um, and our website where you'll find out about the subscriptions is wherereadingrocks.com and all the information Thanks. is there. Lovely, um, and thank you. Questions or, you know, you want to get in touch, there's a contact page on there or you can always uh, tweet me or, you know, message on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I will put all of that information in the description box below so that anyone can find it and link straight through. Um, 
thank you so much for coming onto the channel to discuss reading. I honestly feel like we could talk about it for hours and hours and hours. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Heather for joining us today. I hope that you found this video really insightful and helpful. If you did, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. I have put all of Reading Rock's information in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.